theme of Am I Too Young to Live for Christ? And so we hope that you were blessed by that. We hope that you were able to take something out of that. Um, first off, I want to say, to say again, my name is Minister Martin, and I'm also accompanied by Minister Sadie. Yeah, man, we are two of the Fast Forward Ministry leaders at the Forward Christian Center. Um, but first, we want to go ahead and start into our our scripture. It's going to be taken out of Matthew 22 and uh, starting with verse 34 through 38. And it reads, But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And we're praying. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for being here. Lord, we thank you for speaking through us, Lord, Lord so that others are able to be blessed. Lord, we thank you for your presence being in this place, Lord, for uh, the youth, Lord, that they are able to be involved. Also for their parents, Lord, for everyone connected with the ministry, everyone watching online, Lord, and everyone in the building, Lord. And we just want to give you glory, honor, and praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we are going to start by allowing our panel to introduce themselves. And we will start with this young man here over to my right. <laughs> How y'all doing? My name is James Brown. Um, I've been a part of Ford for seven years now, I think. Seven. Oh, give it up for <laughs> I mean... I've been a part of the media ministry for three years, and I'm just glad to be up here. Amen. Um, hi, I'm Jaisaia. I've been a part of Ford for four years now, and a part of the media ministry for about a year and a half, and I really like this church, so. Amen, amen. Um, good morning, my name is Amaya. Um, I've been to this church for four years, and I'm a part of the dance ministry. Amen. Hi, I'm Aisha, and, and I've been a part of the ministry for four years, and I'm on a camp praise team for about three years, I think. Amen. 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 My name is Eric. Um, I'm nine years old, and I've been a part of four for four to five years. Amen. 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 Hi, my name is Addison. I've been a part of the ministry, well, for a uh, part of Ford for four years, and I on desk, and I've been on dance team for um, three years, and I recently started working in the back with the little ones. Amen. Come on, so give it up for our fast forward youth. We we thank God for everything that they're involved in here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off with our first question. And the question is, why do you think teens should have a relationship with God? Amaya, would you like to answer? I think teens should have a relationship with God so that when they get older, they don't have to question their faith and who they believe in. Amen. Amen. Um. I think teens should have a relationship with God because, um, as the Bible says, um, train up the youth in the way that it should go, and when they're older, they will not depart from their ways. So basically, like Amaya said, uh, they won't question what they believe. They'll know what they believe, and they'll know how to share it with other you know, teens or other people on why they believe what they believe. Amen. 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 And we all know that our relationship with God should be one of the most important relationships that we have in our lives. The same relationship that people see with your peers and see with your friends, people should be able to see that, meaning see it, see that relationship that you have with God as well. It's something that they should see. They should see that light that you carry in your life. We all know that sometimes it's hard, so we're going to send it over to Minister Martin to ask the next question. All right, and so the next question that we have for our panel is, do you think it's hard being a teen or being um, a young person who is all in for Christ. And we're going to start to my right with James. Um, yes, I think so because um, your flesh basically, your flesh is wanting of the world, but your spirit is wanting salvation from God. So 
I think that the fight between your spirit and flesh is very hard because your flesh is not wanting salvation. It's wanting the opposite, basically. So it can affect the joy that you have in Christ. The Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on, give it up for Amen. Um, yes, I do think it's hard for teens to um, be for Christ and still be a teen because, like, let's say you're at school and, like, everyone knows you're a Christian. Either you don't have fun, you're one of those strict people, you like, you, you're, like, anti anything fun. They don't want to hang around you. They don't do things around you because apparently, like, you're the strict person that judges everything they're do- they, everything that they do, and they don't want to be around you because of that. When in reality, that's nothing what Christians are like. And, um... We do have fun, and we get our joy and sal- salvation from the Lord and not from this world like they do. So it's hard. And peer pressure also, like, um, they can try and get you to do things that you know you're not supposed to do, and that conflicts with your faith. So it could draw a line between you and your friends, and you'll have to pick and choose Jesus or them. And that can, like, separate you from a lot of people sometimes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to give a follow-up question to that. You guys told us a little bit about why it's hard. Now I want to hear about how do you guys overcome that. Um, I overcome that by basically um, separating myself from social 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 media, because social media have a hold on a lot of stuff, like a lot. So I separate myself from social media and I get into my word more. And I find out when I s- separate myself on social media, I get a better understanding of the word because, like, I don't have my ear telling me this and that. So, yeah, basically I separate myself from social media. That's how I overcame it. Amen. Amen. Um, the way that I overcame it was, like, I try to get through to the people that said stuff like that to me. Like, I'd be like, hey, that's not what we're about. Um, I try to tell them the gospel. And once I realize that it's, like, not clicking in their head, they're like, oh, I'm not, I don't care, I'm not going to believe this either way, then I had to, like, separate myself from them because I didn't realize that they weren't going to change, and if I stayed around them, I was going to change. So I separated myself from people like that, and it helped. Amen. Amen, amen. Yeah, and those are some good thoughts. And those those are some good thoughts. I also wanted to add that um, a way that you can overcome it is by drawing near to God and by leaning to his understanding. Uh, We can see in... In Philippians 4 and 13, that it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when we lean on to Christ, um, he will he will give us the strength to overcome those things. Amen. Amen. All right. So question number three, why do you think it's important to share the gospel? Uh, I think it's important to share the gospel. Um so for people to understand, like, the importance of having, important, important, how it's important to have God in your life and um, so, like, they can be filled with his word like we are. Okay. Amen. Amen. Anyone else want to answer why it's important to share the gospel? Well, um, I think it's important because, like, you might be the only gospel that someone gets. Like, their whole family, they might be, like, anti-God, anti-Christian, or they just don't care about God enough to tell their children. So um, that interaction between you and that person might be the only interaction they get with Christ or anything of the sort. So without you, they'd be like, they never hear, and um, internally it'll cost them their salvation, and you don't want that. Amen, amen. First Thessalonians 2 and 2 says, the Spirit of God emboldens us to proclaim the gospel without fear. And that's exactly what you just described. Amen. amen. And, and we can also see in, in Mark uh, chapter 16 and 15 where it, it says, um, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So we can see that uh, Jesus was speaking to the disciples when he charged them to uh, with, with spreading the gospel and spreading the good news of Christ. Um, and he didn't give, he, it wasn't to um, a limited a number of people that wasn't to a certain age group, he said to spread the gospel to all creation. So we can see that um, even our teens, even our youth, even our young adults can spread the gospel. It is not just um, adults or you don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to reach a certain age to spread the gospel and to spread the good news of Christ. Amen. 
We all know that sharing the gospel is not only done through the conversations through the Bible, but we can also share the gospel on how we exercise our faith, which leads to our next question. Um, what are some ways that you exercise or show your faith, Eric? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> a, few, a few ways I think you can exercise your faith is by reading your Bible, um, praying, uh, mm -hmm. like spreading the word and like um, and keeping the word in your heart and stuff. Okay. Amen. Amaya? Um, some ways I exercise my faith is by praying throughout the day and Listening to, um, listen to Christian music throughout mm -hmm. the day when I need to. It helps me calm down. Okay. Amen. Amen. You want to answer? Um, a way that I uh, can exercise my faith is like I bring the Bible like almost everywhere I go. Like when I go to school, like at lunchtime, I'll read the Bible, and someone comes up to me that like, oh, that's unusual. Everybody else is like either talking with their friends on their phone, but I'm reading the Bible, and they're like, okay, that's interesting. I want to learn more about it, and that's the way I can exercise my faith and, like, show it to other people. Amen. Amen. James, you want to tell uh, us? A way you can exercise your faith. Um, you can fast. Fasting was very good. When I fasted, I think when we, the first fast I actually did was, I think, last December when the church did the fast, mm -hmm. the 21-day fast. It really helped Amen. exercise my faith. Because um, right after, I think, what day was it we had to come, we would come to the church and they would do like prayer, like 21 days. And it really exercised my faith because I'm not home doing something else. I'm in the church. Like, it helps exercise my faith. Amen. 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 Um, going off of what James said about the fast, yeah, it wasn't my first fast, but it was like the first one I kind of took like serious. And it was like a, it was a social media and a food fast. So it was like a double, double sword for me. <laughs> so, like, every time I saw, like, food or something like that, and mama, she'd be like, no, you got to eat vegetables, you got to eat food. I'm like, bro, the church not here. I can <laughs> And then, so, like, um, but, like, I, I had to, like, really stick to it, and it was challenging. So, it really did help me grow in my faith, though, so. Amen. <laughs> Eric? How do I exercise my faith? Yes. Going to church with my mom. Amen. <laughs> yeah, and, and we can see, um, just as James and uh, Jazia explained, we can see even a uh, fast is something that can reach our young adults, that can reach our teens. Um, it isn't something that we should just uh, participate in as adults or participate in as parents. Uh, we should bring our children and young adults and the youth up in those things because it has an impact on them as well because Christ wants to reach them. Christ wants to um, draw some things or take some things away from their life and, and have them do what he has for them to do. Amen, amen. <laughs> and just like Minister Martin said, when you're exercising your faith you're sho or showing your faith, I think of it as a muscle, right? The more you do it, the stronger it gets. So the more we exercise our faith, the more we show our faith, the stronger our relationships with God get, right? So I want to pivot a little bit and ask another question. All of you guys are very, very engaged in the ministry. So my question is, how has being engaged in the ministry impacted your life as a young adult? Um, it has really helped me learn way more because before that, I wasn't even paying attention I was just like, I'm sitting here, okay. Mm -hmm. But now I can actually engage and learn more. Amen, amen. Addison? Um, well, doing dance helps me, like, express myself, uh, express myself using the gift that God has given me. And being in the back helps me um, use more responsibility and develop myself. Amen, amen. Um... Being on the media team, it's like, it's a good experience because like 
I met James back there, and he's like around my age. And before then, I had like zero friends that was like around my age and believed in God. So it helped me get close with James, Sierra, all the other people back there. They're all real cool people to be around. And yeah, and we have like this little group chat, the media team group chat, where we like get together, talk about like, you know, stuff, how we can improve on the church and stuff like that. And that helps get the gospel out to everyone else. So Amen. It's really cool. Amen. Like Isaiah said, he uh he was the um I would never thought I would have met a Christian friend, but he a good friend, so I'm glad he's my friend. And um, being on the media team, yeah, I love them too. They're my friends too. I love them too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, being on the media team really like this like it made me want to go to church and it made me want to learn more. So like I'm glad Pat Charles said that too. They still need help. So I'm, I thank him. <laughs> For saying that, because if you wouldn't have said that, I would probably would have been sitting over there still. So I thank you, Pastor Charles. I thank y'all too for me. Amen. Being here. Amen. Um, going on what Addie said, me being on the dance team also helps me express myself. It also helps me get other people here, get all my friends here. Is me telling them, oh, I'm dancing. They can be like, oh, I want to come. Mm -hmm. So that, and it also helps me express how I feel mm. and what I really like to do. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, and, and, and we can see that it, it grows. Were you about to say something else, Gua? Uh, I was here, what was the question again? So the question was, how has being engaged in ministry impacted your life as a teen? Okay, well we can see that um, being engaged in ministry as a young adult, as a youth, it grows you up as well. Um, I Even when I think back in my life, I, I know there have been periods of times to where I may not have been as engaged in the things of the ministry, but once I did get engaged in those things, um, I started to be um, get more um, more acclimated with uh, with how to go about certain things, and I also uh, got more, more confidence in what to do. Um, even thinking about when I first began on the praise and worship team, um, there were things that I were unsure about, but the more and more I put work in, I more confident in those things that I was doing. And then it, so it, in turn, it really, it grows you up and it allows you to uh, be confident in the things of the ministry. And also it, um, as James and Jazia said, it allows you to be able to rub shoulders uh, with believers and with like-minded Christians. Amen. Amen. All awesome things. And ultimately being engaged in a ministry allows us to glorify God more. It allows us to use our unique talents. It allows us to use our gifts. It also shows our faithfulness in God and the things of God. It allows us to be an example to others, coming to church, listening to, to the services, studying at home, helps to increase our biblical understanding, aids in fellowship, just as these two guys um, described. And ultimately, it allows us to dedicate ourselves to God and live that life of service that we've been placed on this earth to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now we're going to, you know, go off the beaten path a little bit, and we're going to give you guys a scenario-type based question. So imagine your best friend is feeling unsure about committing their life to Christ. So your friend walks up to you and they say, everybody tells me this is what I'm supposed to do, but I don't even know who Jesus is. Besides, I'm young, so I've got plenty of time to do that. How would you respond to your friend? Um, how I would respond is, yes, you do have time, but it's better to... It's better to know him now than later so that you don't really question it when you get older. Amen. Amen. Um, I say, yeah, you you think you have time until like <laughs> like I know this guy and like his brother, his like brother is paralyzed now, so he can't walk anymore. And like that happened in the span of a day. So a lot can happen in twenty four hours. So you think you have time, you think you have like 50 plus more years, in reality, you could have one more year, one more month, one more week, even one more day. So you you never know when you're gonna leave this earth. So it's always better to like remember that and keep that type of mindset than that, oh, I have this much time type thing. Amen, amen. Why wait, right? 
Why wait? Yeah, like what he said or she said, why wait uh, when you can do it right now? Because you can leave this church and get in an accident just like that. I'm not wishing it on anybody. But it can happen so quick, so why not do it now? Because you don't got all the time in the world. Amen, amen. Um, like what Amaya said, where um, you're young and you think you have time, but you don't. Like, if you're younger, it's better to start swimming when you're younger than when you get older because it's going to get harder when you're older. And if you're younger, it'll be much easier because you'll have more time to practice. Amen, amen. Okay, so... We we just wanna we just wanna thank you for those those nuggets of insight that you all gave. Um, as we get ready to close, we want our panelists to uh, leave some advice for other teens, leave some advice for other young adults um, that may be watching, that may be in the building today, that may be listening. Um, if you can leave some encouraging words regarding having faith for yourself, um, regarding everything that we've been talking about. Um, but mainly the point of having faith for yourself. Um, what what tips of encouragement would you leave for other teens? Um, I leave um, something I always learned. My mom always told me. She said that you are picked out to be picked on. So basically, it's not wrong with being a Christian. It's not wrong. It's not going to be easy being a Christian. But you can get through it. Just have faith and believe that you'll get through it. Amen, amen. Um, going off of what James said, uh, don't, be a, don't be ashamed of being a Christian. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of what we believe because everybody else isn't ashamed of what they believe. They're not scared to share who they like, what their favorite rapper, all this type of stuff. So we shouldn't be ashamed to share our faith either. Amen, amen. <laughs> Anyone else have any, Addy? Um, we'll come back to you. So, you got, go ahead. Um, going off of what they said, always believe in God and always, even though you believe God, you also have to believe in yourself. So if you believe in yourself and you know yourself, you can know God more better and you can believe in him. Amen. Amen. So if you had to give some advice for a teen that was maybe afraid oh. to become engaged. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I had something else to say. Um, also, like going off of my personal experience, like um, around like middle school type. Yeah. Sixth or eighth grade. I was like kind of scared to share what I believed because I get picked on. I get called like a Jesus freak or oh, you're too good, you don't want to, you can't be around us type, um, you know, stuff like that. So I dealt with it, and I know it's hard, because, like, it'd be, like, days I come home, go to my room, and I, like, cry, and I'd be like, God, bro, if, if you pick me out, why are you picking, like, me? Why it got to be like this for me? And then I was reminded of that scripture where Jesus said, um, if the world has hated me, they'll hate you also. So now it's like, I'm not the only one going through this. I shouldn't feel picked out. I shouldn't feel selected. This is happening to a lot of people, and we're all going to get through it, and we all have to get through it. So, Amen. Amen. Like, if you're given a gift, you want to use it, so that way you can um, serve God and um, show your and use it, use your gift to um, serve him. Amen. Amen. All right, so um, as, we, as we close, we just want to recap some of the um, thoughts that were given on today. Um, just to remind everyone, it was all about the topic of why wait. So why wait to be all in for Christ? Why wait to uh, have a relationship with God? Um, because as um, Isaiah said, you know, tomorrow isn't promised. Next week isn't promised. Next month isn't promised. So we have to make sure that we um, keep the main things the main thing and that and that we realize that a relationship with Christ and being all in with Christ is the most important thing in this life. 
Amen. Amen. Go ahead and give these young teens a round of applause. They were very insightful, very open, and very honest. We, there's a lot of wisdom up here, a lot of wisdom. Wisdom not just for them, but for us as adults. Amen? Amen. 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 So if we could go ahead and stand, we'll be ready to close out. And we're just going to go ahead and pray out, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the lives of these youth, Lord. Lord, that they will be able to be built up, Lord. Lord, in your, in your kingdom, Lord, we thank you for your presence being here, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the abilities, Lord, to sing, Lord, to dance, Lord, Lord, to share your gospel, Lord, to share the good news of you, Lord. We uh, ask that someone has been touched by this message on this morning, Lord, and we just thank you for everything that you've done, Lord, and everything that you are doing in this ministry, Lord. Lord, thank you for everything that you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.